started preparing a vlog the other day and uh, the first part I'm using this now because of the sound issues you know we were having to ensure that you can hear me actually which is you know a great feat it seems I had one of these lovely Bill Gates updates you know after which the sound wasn't working properly on the program and then the other day I was recording something for you and I, I paused and then I realized the microphone's red light wasn't on and the whole first part hadn't come through. That's why I had to label it Russian Prophecy Part 2 because Part 1 had no sound, which was, you know, a, a wonderful te technical feat. So um, obviously I'm watching everything that's going on in Ukraine and I just want to discuss this other um, prophecy. It's this time it's a Protestant prophecy. I did the Catholic and the Greek Orthodox prophecies last time and I left links so you could find out more about those just in case what I say didn't make sense. Today I want to talk about a prophecy from the Trumpet magazine in Philadelphia which has been something that has been publishing a magazine for many many decades. I've always found their insights geopolitically very good but I think their basic standpoint is one that I don't necessarily agree with because I still think they're in this frame of reference of America Britain good everyone else bad and no no no, no I don't think that's that's really how it is. So I, I think ultimately it's very hard, as I've discussed before, to know whether the Putin is playing all sides and at the end of the day he's going to stab the WEF in the back and the globalists in the back. I think we'd all like to feel that he is going to do this because I think the natural inclination is to hope someone's on our side, just like we did with Trump. But we've made Putin, well, I don't know about all of us, but a lot of people are making Putin the new Trump and there's almost a lot of Q kind of theories going on about how Putin is now you know he's getting rid of the bio labs and he's getting rid of this and he's doing this and it's pumping up booming up Putin but I think at the end of the day um, Putin may be helpful he may not be helpful we don't know we don't know you know where his bread is buttered at the end of the day it's all going to come down to us at some level we can't just keep hoping that some white knight is going to come along and break up this system. I don't say Putin is is an angel and he's whiter than white. Um, I judge a man by his deeds. He's done a few good things. For example, the Christian Orthodox Church and he seems to be going against the woke agenda and it seems to me that the Rothschilds don't have the banking system, doesn't have quite as much of a stranglehold over Russia. Some people say it doesn't over Iran and China either. And then some people will tell you, oh, the Rothschilds, they, them and their ill control absolutely everything over and done. And I, I just think that's also a very defeatist frame of mind. They can't control everything. I don't believe that they uh, particularly control China. And I just don't see that everyone is always going to want to play along. At some stage, someone with enough power, perhaps a Putin or a Z, might say, no, 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 we've played along while it suited us. And now, you know, we are going to take control of this goodbye. It's all on the table. But as I say, I think that's, uh, uh, you know, uh, while I can certainly see the Russian point in this, um, we can't fall into the trap of hoping that Putin's a good guy and the savior and then he'll end up like Trump supporting, you know, something that we are totally against on this channel, as you know. So the um, in the trumpet, they regard the chosen people as it, we, we know in Christian Judaic culture, the chosen people, right? So they regard the chosen people as basically Israel and the British Empire. So the British Empire plus America, which was, of course, colonized. So they would see it as the English speaking world, including South Africa, which was a colony, um, plus Israel and with the Britain at the heart of it. And they even see that the royal family is almost keeping the seat warm for the return of Jesus Christ, which don't really like that idea. I certainly don't subscribe to the idea of a chosen people because I think that while it's normal that as human beings we're going to have differences and we won't like each other all the time. There are no chosen people. Everyone is exactly the same in God's eyes. I see it. So I don't really subscribe to this chosen people. But the trumpet does play along with that. And they say the reason that the British Empire and then America became so powerful and the people in those countries and in the colonies, Australia, Canada, etc., have enjoyed such prosperity is because, um, you know, they were God's chosen people. But he did say that in the end times, uh, they would fall into decadence and debauchery and they would turn their back on God. I think that's pretty much what's going on with the kind of woke culture thing and rampant um, negative liberalism. Like liberalism can be a positive thing, right? But it's kind of a negative thing, this neoliberal thing that goes on now in the woke culture. And because of that, Gog and Magog, which he sees as Russia and China, would rise up as forces to destroy the West to punish them for turning their back on God. So he, their trumpet magazine has long prophesied that Russia would be a rising power 
who would take on um, a European Union of 12 nations, but not America and Britain, because by this stage, America and Britain have fallen, will, will be falling apart. So by that interpretation, this is not the main event in the World War Three, as they call it, that we're having now. What will have to happen first is America to kind of dissolve as a power and also Britain. Now, you can already see it with America, and I've long said there will be an American civil war, and of course there will be the dollar collapse and a lot more problems internally, so it's very unlikely America is going to lead World War III against Russia, and likewise for Britain. And he also sees the EU sort of crumbling, whittling down to 10 nations, which I can certainly see happening. And those 10 nations would be led by Germany, who would go up against Russia. I think really a lot of people said World War II was really more a German versus Russia thing that the rest got dragged into. Some people say that, obviously, I think it's a lot more complex. So that's how they kind of frame it. And then they say Russia, a strong ally of uh, well, um, China, a strong ally of Russia, will come on board and they will help Russia to win this confrontation. Right. Now, he, they also mentioned that Iran will form an alliance with several North African countries, Egypt, Libya, etc., Somalia. I know there's a Sunni Shia thing going on there, but they say that they will unite as a force called the King of the South, which will also go up against the King of the North, which I think he perceives as, as either Russia or Germany. But So they see that Iran becoming a regional power. I certainly see that could happen because I see possibly Turkey being balkanized, and I do see that there's a lot of changes going on in Egypt, etc. So they could well align with Iran. That is how they see it all unfolding in Armageddon, but they've long prophesied Russia and China becoming a grand power, and they think China's going to take Taiwan because obviously America and them have shown they're so weak in this, there's not much they can do. So when it comes to, I strongly think that if Biden had said, okay, we won't put any nuclear warheads in Ukraine, which he was asked by Putin to agree with that in January, this could all have been avoided. I totally lay this at the door of the the Biden Obama administration with Victoria Nuland and uh, Hillary Clinton because they helped with the help of uh, George Soros money to install a puppet regime in 2014 and then later on we had this comedian win an election but basically since 2014 Ukraine turned from being neutral slash pro-Russian to being a client state of America through which all sorts of money laundering, child trafficking and other corruption could be run. Whereas Hunter Biden was given a no-show job with a gas company, as people have mentioned, so with Pelosi's son is doing something in Ukraine and also John Kerry's. So the Democrat Party were running all their, their nefarious business, making a lot of money out of Ukraine. I don't think this was at all for the benefit of democracy or the Ukrainian people. The putsch was certainly to um, extend an arm of American power to rub Russia's nose in it. They would not... Um, I believe the first thing they did in 2014 was pass a law that they would not respect minority languages, which means Russian. So the ethnic Russians in Donetsk and Lubansk were, were discriminated against, and we know they were shelled, schools were bombed, and the media never told us about that discrimination and ostracization and genocide that was going in, on in the southeast of Russia, of Ukraine, in those areas when, you know, there was this golden period of Ukrainian democracy that's just come to an end now with this wonderful comedian president who you know everyone thinks is there for the best of his country when all evidence real evidence if you have a look says no so they've been pushing to um, get uh, ukraine to join nato now effectively there are already troops nato troops in ukraine ukraine has been joining nato troops in places like afghanistan they are for all intents and purposes already in nato now, why do they want countries joining NATO? Well, then they have to spend 2% of their budget on the military, and then that's more sales of F-35s, which aren't really very good, and suffocate the pilots and fall off the edge of the aircraft carriers, but don't worry about that. And it does wonders for the profits of Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, blah, blah, blah. So, yes, there's a big benefit there. But I think the jokers, all these countries now want to be part of NATO, including Sweden and Finland and Moldova. Do they really want to pay the 2% GDP? to the military because the existing members didn't want to and that's why Trump was really cross when he went over to NATO and he said look don't expect America to defend you you've got to cough up as well which they invariably don't want to do you know I just feel that the whole of Europe look with scorn at the Bible Belt Americans the hillbillies as they call them the Trump supporters they sneer down their nose at those people but when there's a problem with Russia those are the people they want to come and fight their war for them and I find that quite sickening anyway I mean 
you know, Ukraine and Russia have a long, long history going back. It wasn't even an established country until Lenin made it one in 2022, and then uh, 1922, and then uh, Khrushchev uh, gave some more territory like Lubansk and Donetsk to Ukraine and the Crimea to Ukraine. So the Crimea was part of Russia a lot longer than California has been part of America. So they were also in their rights to go there to protect their warm water port of Sevastopol. So, you know, there's, there's so much to this and there's every reason. It's just like the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis reversed where Putin doesn't want nuclear warheads of a hostile power right on his doorstep, just as they didn't want it in America. So you've got to see it from that point of view. And it means so many people now jumping on the bandwagon just because they saw a few news items and they feel engaged in the story when, you know, Somalia is bombing Yemen. I mean, there's never been peace since 1945. There's always some country bombing some other country. I mean, the Obama administration was bombing the heck out of the northern Pakistan. I mean, there was a cry. Look what they did to Libya. And, you know, people who come on very clever, like, oh, Putin will be gone. We'll get rid of Putin. The world will be better without Putin. Have they thought about what would happen if the whole of, U of Russia went the same way as Yugoslavia? And when do you remember? Do people remember the Balkans conflict? You know, do they not realize that when these leaders are removed, like Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein, like they tried to remove Assad, the result is never good. It's not replaced by some stable rainbow um, uh, uh, president and, and it isn't a land of milk and honey. It's usually one enormous mess. Can you imagine a country the size of Russia and all the satellite states like Ukraine, Kazakhstan, whatever, being dragged into unholy mess? People who just want Putin gone because, oh, the media has told them that he is bad, haven't thought this through, I'm afraid. They want to put the world in a terrible peril. So anyway, you know, we, we're already facing much higher fuel prices and gas prices. The West have made themselves weak. Trump put them, one of the very good things he did was energy sufficiency, right? Now they've ch closed down the Keystone pipeline and without, and also if you close down natural gas, you don't get the nitrogen to mix with the potash to make your fertilizer. Uh, there was a big, one of the biggest potash, uh, that's, uh, is, it, is it potassium and phosphorus? you needed for, to go with my nitrogen for fertilizer it was one of the biggest factories in the world in either Saskatchewan or Alberta in Canada it was bought by an Australian company then sold to a globalist company who basically shut it down meaning you know no potash no fertilizer most fertilizer now being imported from Russia apart from of course and Belarus actually apart from all the rare earth minerals and the gas and the oil and everything like that these green dreams have weakened this country uh, UK and America and people are still living in some sort of Churchillian dream where they just think these Western countries like the led by America and the UK are just gonna ride in and get rid of Putin it's gonna be happy days they don't realize how weak the West has become and they don't realize that so many countries now recognize that NATO can't defend them because America is now weak they can't even manage their own energy they are not energy sufficient they are reliant on, on Russia or other countries and you know there's going to be massive inflation there and countries are going to start like India like Brazil they don't want to get involved in this nor does India because they don't want to damage relationships with China and the Belt and Road Initiative so you know when they think Europe think everyone's on our side no they're not because they're looking to the future and they think maybe they might look east to where the power is and that's with China and there's no real benefit to them for getting involved in this sort of pointless Thing with Russia. It might not be very nice what's happening there, but we don't know anything about what the media is telling us is true from recent to your experience, never mind before that. It's probably all false. Uh, most, well, probably everything's false. I don't say bad things aren't happening, but probably everything they're showing is, is concocted. But uh, we'll see. But uh, as I say, you know, people who are being gung ho about removing Putin don't know the history don't know the history of Russia, don't understand Russia, they don't know the history of Ukraine. And I don't think people understand the way geopolitics has changed. America is now not the power it was. People with insight can see it's going one way and they'll want to line up behind the, the new winners, which are going to be China, their allies, Russia, and those countries on the Belt and Road. The power is shifting east. It didn't have to be this way, but unfortunately it is this way because of politics in the West and because people have been asleep at the wheel while you know our military has been underfunded in these countries while these 
<laughs> ridiculous green energy policies, which, as I say, might have been OK spread over a very, very long time period, but done so quickly, ex just weaken the country and we're all going to suffer. And like Ice Age Farmer was saying, you know, 8% of the world's uh, grain comes from Ukraine. So does a lot of uh, rapeseed oil. So all the, you've got all these, you see the Black Sea there, got all these ships can't leave the Black Sea. All these uh, ships can't dock in the UK and America because they're stopping Russian ships dropping, uh, Russian ships docking. So all the grain that's being imported around the world, I'm not saying UK import that much grain from Ukraine, but a lot of countries will. So, you know, you can see what I said about Saturn in Aquarius coinciding with world famines. Well, if you're shutting down one of the biggest grain markets, and uh, basically it's also disrupting the shipping industry enormously as a whole, which is one of their carbon zero goals, by the way. Um, one thing's going to happen. It's rocketing food prices, fuel poverty and food poverty. So that's just what I wanted to say today.